Well, if you don't take down this fence, I'll hop over it anyway. I've done some reading. Things don't have to be this way. You're worried I might climb the wall and stumble across your family tree. I bet you there's some roots down there you don't want me to see. <laughs> because your ancestors, they stole this land. Sensed it off in a power grab and ripped it from beneath the feet of the folks who used to dwell on it. Who can go where? Who owns what? How much land have you got? Because we're craving bird song and a lonely sunrise. An ancient tree and wildflowers in the summertime. Swimming in the lake, sleeping beneath the stars. These simple things, they are inherently ours. By fencing off the commons, they're fencing off our minds And we're only given access to a smidgen of our rivers And we're going stir crazy in the towns and the cities Knowing nature can fill that hole We just need a ride to roam Oh, we just want to walk the land Treat it like common ground But the first figure I want to give you is one, one percent, one percent of the population own half of all England. <laughs> it's not panto season yet, but yes. <laughs> They're behind me, okay. Um, <laughs> the next figure is eight percent. We have a right to roam over just eight percent of England. And that's thanks to the Countryside and Rights of Way Act that was brought in 20 years ago. That's the sum total of the right to roam that we have in England. And that's why Nick and I last year decided to set up the Right to Roam campaign to try and get an extension to our right to roam. The last figure I just want to leave you with is 50 million. That's the number of pheasants that are released into the countryside every year. 50 million! So maybe we can make a little bit more room for us peasants yeah. and a little bit less room for the peasants. Thank you very much. I'm Lisa and I've travelled from Bristol to be here today in Brighton. I feel strongly about um, land access and I feel very strongly against private property ownership, private land ownership and the fact that we have right to roam on like less than 10% of the land in England is disgusting, it's disgraceful and we all belong to nature. We're, this is, we're all part of this land and it shouldn't be fenced off from us, we're just the rich few. And, I grew up in a very working class area in East Kent um, and didn't really feel any connection to nature until I was in my 20s and I was hitchhiking around different places and I was wild camping and then suddenly something clicked inside me and, and it made me wonder like how many people grow up without that sense of connection. As working class people, we don't have that same access to nature. We don't grow up with that same access to nature. So this campaign to give us the right to roam is really important to give working class people and everyone access to nature to know what we're fighting for, to know what we're fighting to protect. <laughs> Uh, my name's Joe. I've read uh, Guy's book, Who Owns England, and Nick's book about Trespass, and um, both of them really sort of fired me up in terms of, you know, I didn't really understand about the lack of access to the countryside, even though I, I sort of enjoy the countryside. Um, but yeah, once I kind of found out the figures about kind of how little access we really have, um, that was when I thought actually this is quite an important issue that not many people know about, and also. 
just the way it's linked back to, you know, kind of colonialism and, and kind of the way that land has been passed down um, through these estates for hundreds of years um, and no one's really ever sort of challenged them. As far as I'm aware, um, you know, the, the campaign is to try and push for a, a stronger right to roam um, access like they have in Scotland. Um, you know, it seems to work well there. Um, you know, people say, oh, it couldn't work in England because, you know, where there's too many people and people don't really behave well in the countryside, but I think that's a complete myth. The um, vast majority of people really do behave well in the countryside and the more people get used to being in the countryside, you know, the more respect they'll have for it. Nineteen thirty two. Much of the moorland was kept private and was guarded by gamekeepers. This led to frequent conflict with walkers seeking access. It was a beautiful day. A lovely day, clear as crystal, and of course it was just at the beginning of spring, April the 24th. And when we got there, there was a tremendous number of rams there, far more than we ever imagined, and just went out. <laughs> we went out, follow us lads, follow us girls, and we went out, we led the way, the rest just came along, and off we went down Valley Road, singing, very, very cheerful. And uh, the police just fell, fell in behind us. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing else they could do at that time. <laughs> we started to scramble up the steep sides and we climbed steadily in one long outstretched uh, line. And the idea behind that was that if any part of the line was stopped, then the rest would simply just carry on. And sure enough, when we'd gone about three quarters of the way up the scramble, a group of keepers who had been watching us all the time, we were, we were under observation all the time, of course, because they were about the only people who could afford binoculars in those days. They'd watched us and the, they came charging down, waving the sticks and shouting, get back, get back, and waving the sticks threateningly. Well, of course, there were only about a dozen or so of them, and they could only meet one tiny section of the group. Minor scuffles broke out. My pal Wolfie was hit across the head with a stick. Well, uh, he wasn't the kind of chap who would uh, accept that kind of thing. <laughs> I say, he was a really nice chap, but quite tough. So he just slammed the keeper and took the stick off him. And then they all carried on. We decided that uh, we'd come to make a point. We'd made our point. We'd face up to whatever, uh, whatever consequences arose. And uh, we went back singing again, cheerful. And we were stopped. And they made a number of arrests. They arrested five people at that point. I was one of the people arrested and we were taken into custody into the Hayfield lockup. My name is Peter Winnick, and my father was Wolfie Winnick who was helped Bernie Rothman organise the Kinder Mass Trespass on Kinder Scout. I think there were three of them. Um, and my dad was the person who blew the whistle 
which dictated when they should start, when they should turn left, when the gamekeepers were coming, etc. This is the official IBM team. Yeah, we have two of them. Yeah, what colour? Hey, Terry Howard from Sheffield, yeah. I attended the 50th anniversary of the Kinder Trespass in Hayfield. There was just a mass of people. And Benny Rothman got up and he spoke to everybody. And that enthused us that much that when we got back to Sheffield, we said, right, that's it. We set up an organisation called Sheffield Campaign for Access to More. And from that day on, right till the year 2000, we'll trespass activities regularly to uh, work for and claim the right to roam over all the moorland in, around Sheffield and Manchester and everything. And we succeeded in doing that. see everybody having access to the countryside. You know, people of diverse backgrounds, you know, previously people of colour been less involved in the countryside for various reasons. They've not gone out walking, they don't feel welcome. You know, we're slowly changing that. And I'd just like, you know, it to be that everyone could just go out. I love walking and, um, and I just love the I love the disruptive element of it as well. The fact that it's a, a, a group of largely people of colour coming together to, to walk in the countryside is, yeah, really appealing to me. I've come now with my daughter. And it's about time everybody got together as one. I love that idea. You know, you can't get better than that idea, can you? Yeah, OK. <laughs> this event is not just historic because it marks 90 years of trespass, but because it's the first time in the history of this country that people of color have come together to celebrate and stake claim to the countryside for the right to roam. The 1932 mass trespass led by Benny Rothman and his working compatriots was a class issue. However, access and the right to roam today is more of a race and a privileged class issue like, I don't know, seven or eight months ago, me and Sam met for the first time and we just like exploded together with this conversation. We were like, yes, 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 all of this. What about on the Kinder Scout Trespass, we organize an event to celebrate the 90th anniversary because it's been 90 years and we have won something. We've won some paths, but 92% of the land is still locked away. And for black and people of color, there are even more barriers to be welcome in the countryside. And so this is how we've ended up here today, which is really beautiful that you've all been able to come. And I can't wait to walk with you all in the hills very shortly. Although I've been chatting to people and everyone's like, this seems nice, should we just stay here? <laughs> you are walking, if you can. <laughs> I think there are more people of colour gathered here today than there were original trespassers back in 90 years ago today, which is amazing. And yeah, I wrote a book called I Belong Here, which I'm going to read from the prologue because it's quite self-explanatory. I was on a journey through Northern England in summer 2019 when I became the victim of a hate crime, when a man attacked my right to belong here with words that hurt the very heart of me. I was told to get back on a banana boat and go back to where you're from. This is where I'm from. I'm from the North, the glorious North. This land is my land too, and I belong in the UK as a brown woman, just as much as a white man does. A place called Hope. I watched the wings as they soared through the sky. So sure of itself, so confident was the curlew as it caressed the clouds. So in its element. Where do I belong? 
What does it mean to belong? What does it mean to feel like you don't belong? How can nature help us to find a greater sense of belonging? And how can we ensure that people care enough to realise that nature and wildlife belong as much to this world as us humans do? Ultimately, I hope for a world in which every creature, great and small, is accepted and I don't have to say it at all. I'm a Londoner, currently an East Londoner, and I wrote a book called The Green London Way, which is a 106 mile walking route around London, which links together parks and commons and woods and heaths and, and, and towpaths and riverbanks and all sorts of open spaces. And it was a real education to me that just about every open space in London, every one that I visited or investigated, had had to be fought for at some time in its history, either to establish it in the first place or to, uh, or to protect it from later development or, or reduction. And those struggles, I mean, they go right back beyond the Victorian era. In the 17th century, Edward Colfe was leading masses of people on marches to, to protect the Northwood in North London. The Victorians were great developers, actually, but they were also great protectors of open space. And so you've got things like the Open Spaces Society um, established in that era. But you know, those struggles, sometimes they involve thousands of people going on marches, as they did at Plumstead Common, for example, or One Tree Hill in, in, in South London. Tearing down fences and storming these spaces that have been legally or illegally enclosed. People went to prison for this. People went to prison, they came out of prison, and they went straight back on the campaign to visit the places uh, where they'd just been arrested. Moreover, these, these places like this are of free access. That is the really important part of it. It is a place free for us all. Welcome, really nice to see you on this lovely morning. I'm Nick from the Pennine Arts. Uh, this is a Pendel Radicals um, project this weekend, and it's led by Nick, who's our designated walks leader. He's a professional walks leader. Thanks, Nick. So, yes, uh, we discovered this sort of countryside campaign is Tom Stevenson who created the Pennine Way, who was brought up in Worley, and we'll pass, I can point you out where he lived. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about him as we go. So it wasn't just the Pennine Way, it was a lot of other things too, so. Everybody happy? Yeah, perfect. Everybody got some lunch? Yeah. Lunch on Pendle Hill. Just while we're here, if you look down Queen Street, that's where that's where the Stevensons lived. So he came here when he was a, a young a young child from Charlie. And by the time he was 13, um, he was already working in the mill. He apparently worked in the calico print works. No sort of formal education, so it was all self-taught. The inspiration for the Pennine Way came from his, his, his early rambles up onto Pendle Hill from Worley. And it was this what created the idea of this long green trail uh, across the backbone of England. He was very passionate about rambling and the right to roam. So 30 years of campaigning, lobbying MPs, 
Um, Changing the law. Yeah, getting the, getting the national parks and access to the countryside act passed in 1949. So yeah, 30 years. He didn't give up though, okay. and no, it was no. and it did become the first national trail uh, or long distance official long distance path in the country. The 1949 National Parks Act gave us the first 10 national parks. The Pennine Way finally opening in 1965. It took until 2010 for the South Downs to be included. We had the rave culture, so when I was young, we started going to warehouse parties and dancing. They started clamping down and arresting us and stopping us. It became, we weren't fun. So the rave scene were realising that the travel of homes and where they were finding land in fields that was somewhere where we could go and party. Um, so yeah, we probably made it worse for the, the uh, Romani travellers, probably. When the rave scene, they started coming out of towns and making their um, festivals bigger and bigger, which is where you got Castle Morton, where it got so big that that's where they brought the criminal justice bill in and clamped down. In order for the government to clamp down on unlicensed raves, they introduced the Criminal Justice and Police Order Act of 1994, which restricted and reduced existing rights. Further draconian restrictions were introduced in 2022 with the Police and Crime Act, which criminalised all forms of protest. because obviously we are all impacted by the impending policing bill uh, and specifically the law around trespass um, which impacts everyone around access to land while camping, um, living freely, roaming freely on the land but for Romani travellers, Irish travellers specifically it is an act of cultural genocide and now it will become illegal to stop anywhere with the intent to reside. And what that means for traveller families is that they can have their house seized, they can face imprisonment, they can face impossible fines, 2,000 plus pounds of fines. Um, and for our community, there's no safety net underneath that. And I want to finish off, right, I'm going to teach you a little bit of Romany. Um, it's really simple. It means Romanies rise up. And it goes, Opry Roma! Opry Roma! Opry Roma! Thank you very much. Campaigners and trespassers carried on the struggle for the right to roam throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, leading to the Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000, which gave us access on foot to mountain, moor, heath and down. Well, this piece of land is, is very significant um, because it belonged to, belongs to Lord Macclesfield. And um, he would be saying, you know, I don't want, you know, all the hoi polloi walking on my land. He was very unpleasant. And um, I did lots of interviews up here. We did lots of um, rallies up here. The Ramblers had a very big rally here um, in 1999. And we had a stretch of walkers going all the way down the hill. Um, we think that about 3,000 people came from all over the country. Um, and from Wales and Scotland too, I think. Um, and I was very much involved um, in my run up to the Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000. Well, I'd been working on it for about, um, about 10 years, I suppose, through the Ramblers. And we knew what we wanted access to Mountain Moor Heath Down, registered common land. 
and, and we had we drafted legislation. We gave it particularly to Paddy Tipping MP, Gordon Prentice MP, and they were one. We had a wonderful batch of MPs, and we also got pledges from MPs um, on on all from all parties, um, so that when Labour get, got elected, we then just had to hold them. We got it in their manifesto, obviously, but we then had to hold them um, to, to doing something. Uh, and then we kept the pressure up. But then in 1998, um, the government issued a consultation. Was it going to be voluntary? Was it going to be legal access? Which was a big disappointment. And we were able to show that landowners were not ready to volunteer access to the scale needed and that we needed the law. And then in March 99, it was announced there would be the law so landowners could no longer say, get off my land, you know, if you were on access land. So it was significant, but I think it was only really the start. And we, we certainly need more access there. We need that to be sorted out. The Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000 made these areas accessible. After a century of campaigning and trespassing, most of England is still unavailable. So. On the 24th of September 2022, the Right to Roam campaign organised a mass trespass in Worth Forest, Sussex, to protest the proposed development of an ancient woodland. This land is your land, this land is my land, from the coast of Cornwall to the Scottish Highlands, from the sacred forests to the holy islands. This land was made for you and me. Okay, um, we're going for a beautiful walk. The walk will also be a trespass. This trespass is not a criminal offence and we don't expect any issues with any kind of authority or the police or whatever. I'm here for my five grandchildren because I so love nature and I've had such a fortunate life and the way in which uh, global warming capitalism are destroying the country, I want to try and defend it for them. The only way is to, to trespass. They, they, they won't make it easy for us. You have to be prepared to push back against these rules that have been imposed on us. It's our land. You can't say the trees don't belong to us. So yeah, um, capitalist, private ownership, it all needs to be rethought. We want to have a nice clear thing. Go find a tree, a nice tree, sit by the tree and just, you know, it's got centuries of yeah. Knowledge, yeah, and people want to destroy it. Centuries and centuries of knowledge, and they want to cut it all down just for resources, you know, just to make a bit of money. Yeah, that's all they want to do. It's all about collateral money. They don't think about the future. They just think about here and now. I can tell him whatever happened. Um, I've read the book, Trespass. And I enjoy swimming and I do a lot of wild swimming and a lot of wild walking and uh, this has inspired me, the book has inspired me just to go a few more places that I thought I shouldn't go. I saw a sign there when I was walking and on the sign it said no trespassing. You know, I've done plenty of long walks and like week-long camping trips, just getting further and further away from like cities and whatever, looking like this. And yeah. you, you do experience it, you know, you get people following you, you get people staring at you more than they, they would if it was just any other backpacker walking through. But you forget yeah. that being queer is a thing that separates you from other people. I guess it stems from the age-old thing of 
trans or gay people or queer people in general uh, it not being a natural thing. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, with people that are obsessed with the natural state of things, yeah. you can understand where that kind of starts separating queer people from the countryside and making it understandably um, dangerous sometimes. For me, history is about unfinished business. It's about the battles that have been won and the struggles that have been lost but could yet be won. And each generation passes the baton on. Just 1% of the population own half of all the land in England. Isn't it time they shared a little bit more of that land with the rest of us? And we'd like to see mass trespasses spread across England over the next year. So please, if you feel you'd like to get involved with that, or you feel you're already involved with that but want to know more, um, please visit righttoroam.org.uk and get trespassing. The land is ours, so let's take it back. Who can go where? Who owns what? How much land have you got? So if you don't take down this fence, we'll hop over it anyway. We come in numbers, and things don't have to be this way. Yeah! 